Good evening, and welcome to the Masonic Roundtable, a roundtable composed of uh, young Masons throughout the country who have just an interest in getting together, talking about Masonic topics, and having a good time. The upfront disclaimer is that uh, the thoughts and opinions expressed here are solely the opinions of the participants and do not represent any Grand Lodge positions or statements. So um, it's just a casual atmosphere where we want to share ideas, have a good time, talk about anything going on uh, this week in Masonic News or anything going on around our respective areas. Um, this is a public broadcast, so let's make sure we keep our conversations at the right level. I'll let uh, everyone go around and introduce themselves. I'll start. Um, my name is John Ruark. I am the past master of the Patriot Lodge number 1957 in Fairfax, Virginia. The Patriot Lodge is an academic lodge that has a working relationship with George Mason University. Uh, has only been in existence for about two years, and uh, we've really had um, a good time getting started as a brand new lodge. Um, we've had no no history really, so we've had lots of um, innovation, lots of first times of doing things. So um, it's really been a great experience, and I will hand it off to uh, Robert Johnson. <clears throat> Hey guys, uh, Rob Johnson here, host of uh, Whence Came You podcast. Um, I'm a uh, senior warden at Waukegan Lodge, 78 in Waukegan, Illinois, uh, which is just a uh, regular lodge, not an academic lodge, the typical blue lodge. Um, and uh, that's it for me. I'll pass it off to. Uh, we'll go to uh, Nick. Oh, oh, oh me. Uh, <laughs> my name is Nick Johnson. I uh, run the blog uh, MillennialFreemason.com. Uh, I blog there sometimes, apparently, according to how few posts I put up there. <laughs> I'll get some more out, I promise. Uh, I'm a past master of Corinthian Lodge, number 67, Farmington, Minnesota. So uh, You can feel free to ignore everything I say because as a past master... It wasn't ever going to be as good as the as my years. So. <laughs> All right, so I'll just pass it off to Jason now. Hey, good evening, guys. My name is Jason Richards. I am currently the senior deacon of Acacia Lodge Number no. 16 in Clifton, Virginia. It's one of the uh, older lodges in the Northern Virginia area, just outside of DC. About 150 years old. It's a it's a nice country lodge. I'm also a member of John Ruark's Lodge, the Patriot Lodge number 1957 at the, the George Mason University. And I think I'm actually uh, maybe the, uh, the youngest or the newest uh, member of the fraternity here on the, on the panel tonight. Um, I was raised just about a, a year and a half ago. So uh, looking forward to, uh, to hanging out with everybody. I am going to, to pass the hat off to Juan now. Oh, the best for last. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, my name is Juan Sepulveda. I am the host of the Winding Stairs podcast and blog. I am a member <laughs> of Eola Lodge number 207, Free and Accepted Masons, in the city of Orlando, Florida. What? And I am in the same boat as Nick regarding the frequency of posts. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, about uh, quality, not quantity, right? We blame it on the kids. <laughs> That's why mine are always one paragraph long, so... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, so, yeah, basically, um, we have this kind of time to recreate the kind of the after-the-lodge kind of conversations. Uh, one thing I think would be useful is to kind of talk about if there's any upcoming Masonic news uh, that you've either heard through uh, the likes of Chris Hodap's blog or uh, or any of the, the blogs you've heard here. Um, I think one of the big highlights uh, that we want to talk about is the upcoming Masonic Week uh, in Reston, Virginia. So I'll kind of open the floor first to see, um, does anyone have any experience about uh, going to Masonic Week or what do they know about it, what don't they know about it? The floor is yours. I have no idea. I was a member of, uh, I got in, in, introduced to uh, the AMD last year, and everybody wants to go. Everybody's, you know, 
excited about it. I was told uh, if you went to every single event and uh, breakfast and lunch, you were going to spend a lot of money, <laughs> but that the content was amazing. <clears throat> I, uh, I've never been. I wanted to go, but uh, like most of you guys, I do have day jobs and can't afford the week off. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, what is Masonic Week exactly? Because, you know, I, I kind of know what it is, but being in the northern sticks, you know, where where it, it kind of, when you feed the sled dogs, you know, sometimes <laughs> they just, you know, you don't have enough food to get them there. So can somebody, like, tell me exactly what to expect in Masonic Week if I if I ever get a chance to go out there when I finally get my, uh, my uh, uh, what do you call those things? Snow, ski do things or whatever Snow they're called. <laughs> Man, Dog I don't even know. Yeah. You know, I, I'm so busy with now, my now snowshoes right now. Yeah, lying now. You're not. You're not in the North Sticks. There's this snow thing I've heard of. I know. You know that that snow sled. You know. I don't know. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> yeah, one of, one of my uh, impressions of Masonic Week, you know, not not having ever gone to one yet. This is a little bit of an outsider's perspective, but going back to when Freemasonry first emerged um, out of the shadows in 1717 in, in England, within those first 30 or so years, people were creating degrees like wildfire. I mean, there yeah. there were 50 to 100, you know, new degrees that were that were coming out. And um, to me, from what I've seen from the the postings about Masonic Week, the the great thing about it is that it's it's a way to go and experience some of these extra degrees that uh, that don't get a lot of, of face time in mainstream masonry. And I think part of that is is the allure that you're going to experience something that very, very, very few people, even in the Masonic community, get to experience. Yeah, it's true. The, uh, the AMD puts on, they have a series of... Um, of degrees that are extra, there's the order of corks, there's all kinds of them, and some of them seem really, really interesting. Um, and they have a, a Masonic doctorate degree uh, that they've put on. They put one on at the uh, Valley of Chicago, I think, last year, which drew a crowd. Um, they give you like a little certificate that says uh, you have a doctorate in masonry, or you know this kind of wow. thing. Wow, uh, it's it's kind of a neat. Um, Experience and some AMD councils I know put on the degrees. Others meet just for purposes of research and fellowship. Uh, my particular AMD council, uh, from time to time, will put on a degree, but uh, I have not yet seen an AMD council put on the degrees, which I would love to see. And I think that's uh, what AMD and the uh, uh -huh. Masonic Week is uh, kind of about. It looks like sure. looks like John's well, got the AMD website. Okay, <laughs> right. I was going to ask if everyone could see that. Um, are you guys seeing it on your video now? Yeah, yeah. you're good. Yeah, so um, yorkright.com slash Masonic Week. Um, this is the official Masonic Week that gets updated every year. Um, as you can see, this year will be February 12th, so that's tomorrow through the 16th. <clears throat> full of uh, lots of appended bodies. Now, it is a York Rite associated thing. Um, so, um, although they have a ton of open programs and uh, materials, uh, the some of the, the closed door sessions, you either have to be a member of these bodies or um, at least be a York Rite Mason. So you can see a whole, whole bunch of little icons here of, of the different events. Uh, I'm not even going to begin to walk through all of these <clears throat> but uh, some of the highlights though, I mean there are some things like the Masonic Society um, if you're interested in any kind of Masonic research at all uh, you know, I highly encourage um, you know, anyone to join that, four, 40 bucks a year gets you uh, four journals and um, a nice little pin and a little charter so um, it's uh, a great thing. Um, I am also a member of um, the local AMD council in my area, and uh, one, one thing that's really nice being here in Virginia and being so close to uh, Washington, D.C., is we do get to have um, the access to, you know, this kind of uh, Masonic uh, material where people come in from all around the world. It's really fascinating um, that literally this is, this is in the next town over for me, so um, it's 
one of these opportunities I have not been to yet, but certainly um, plan on crashing sometime this week. You know, that, that brings up an interesting question, and it's kind of, I don't know, kind of off to the side, but what do you guys think of honorary bodies? Because I'm, I'm a member of an AMD council. I'm also a member of Knight Masons. And, I mean, do you think that they're good for the craft? Do you think they create some kind of barriers? You know, I've, I've always wondered about that. Especially, I'd love to know what a new Mason, one that's newly minted, thinks about them as well. But uh... Uh, I think I've just been called out. Uh, here. Well, like I, I mentioned um, before we, we got things up and running on the air, you know, I'm, I'm a member of uh, Fakir Royal Arch Chapter Number 25 in Fairfax, Virginia, and right now that's the only appendant body I'm a member of because I'm trying to concentrate my, my efforts on, on the Blue Lodge um, until I get through the East in 2017. I think it's interesting being uh, because we're we're all family men um, here. It's it's very interesting trying to balance our our Masonic obligations with our family obligations. So with all of these appendant bodies, you know, there are, there are practically hundreds of them. Yeah. It's really an exercise in time management and making sure that you are putting your most important obligation, that being your obligation to your family, ahead of your life as a Mason. So I do not see myself joining a ton of appendant bodies. I, I may do some of them. I'm very interested in AMD because of the scholarship. I, I really love uh, you know, the, the historical literature and, and scholarship on Masonry. But outside of that, I probably won't do too much because I've seen some Masons who have, you know, had some hard times with their family because they're simply never home. Oh, so yeah. it's all about a balance. The mm -hmm. the problem with these honorary organizations is they're pulling from a very very select um, membership body, which is you know Masons, and in the case of like AMD councils, you have to be um, a Royal Arch Mason in order to, to be in one of those councils. So I can see where all of, these in the, in the, all of these appendant bodies are clamoring for members, but that can easily overwhelm the, the Blue Lodge membership themselves. And it, it can create problems. I think if there's a way to sustain all of these organizations, that's great. They have a purpose. But I think time will tell whether or not... Um, the new Masons of today with all of these obligations and all of these other things pulling at their their time um, will actually be able to sustain those or not. I think you've taken a very wise path. If you – and it's one thing that I, I, try, I try to instill in the younger brothers that I get to meet that there is time for you to join these other appendant bodies and all these other uh, organizations. There's a lot to be learned within the first three degrees, you know, even within the first two degrees. Um, there's so much that you can learn and apply uh, to your life. And oftentimes I've seen where even, even before uh, a new brother is raised to the sublime degree of, of Master Mason, people are already pitching to him and, and trying to <laughs> Yes, I, I'm sure you've seen this too. Uh, and it, it's it's noble because you do want them to be part of this these appendant bodies if you're part of it because there's additional information that they can learn there, but not at the expense of neglecting the the foundation of, of Freemasonry. So. Absolutely. Well, and what I do with new candidates, and it's kind of funny, is that well, I guess it's not funny, but what I do is you know you've got these guys that are you know they're handing out petitions just left and right. My usual response to him, because I'm, I'm big in, in New York, right? I usually tell him, this is what I want you to do. you got one year to hang out here. Once you're all done with that year, you come back to me if you're ready, grab a petition, and go. The old guys hate that. Because they sit there, you know, they're, they're, the numbers game is always clicking along. And, and I sit there and go, guys, guys, if they're going to leave after a year as being a Master Mason, they are sure not going to stick around for your body either. So why are you worrying about it? You know, yeah. give them time. Let them think about it. I mean, I usually only push the Royal Arch anyway. I mean, that's the only one I ever say. You know what? After a year, 
If you're thinking about it, try the Royal Arch because it connects <laughs> with your Blue Lodge stuff. But after that, you know what? Just just leave it alone. Just you know, work through. I'm sure you're going to be put in a chair at some yeah. point. You know, it's like <laughs> you know? And you also so see... just you know, calm down, enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You also see that whenever it's important to learn how to say no. That's that's it's crucial in, in number one in Freemasonry <laughs> and in business <laughs> everywhere. The lost word. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> learning learning to to say no in a very respectful kind of way. Uh, I was approached by a a brother that was about to be uh, installed. I think he was going to be a potentate in um, in the shrine. And he approached me and and tried to tell me, oh, brother, you would you would do well because of this or the other. And I was flattered because he approached me personally. And but I thought. I'm gonna be lying to you if I tell you, oh, that's let's do it, and you know, I give you, uh, I pay for the dues, and then what's gonna happen? You're never gonna see me at the shrine. Um, I'm gonna be just another number. I'm gonna be just writing a check, and there's no benefit, pretty much, to anybody. There's no fellowship happening at the shrine. There's, I'm not getting anything out of it. Perhaps I'll participate in degrees or 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 what have you, but very limited. And another thing is that. I see other brothers that get involved too early, and they spread too thin, and mm -hmm. then they can't give the best of them to anybody. Right. So well, my, they're everywhere. Me, that's like giving everybody fifty percent instead of two or three things a hundred percent. It's like a restaurant that has way too much on the menu, mm -hmm. and they do everything kind of mediocre. But there's a couple things uh, that if they could just focus on, you know, it would be <laughs> Amazing, but usually half the time everything else on their menu you could make at home and better. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, well one, my experience was, was a little different. What I did was I did wait about a year and joined York Rite because I knew it was a little bit more personal going through those degrees. <clears throat> and then about a year later after that, um, uh, I was either did the Templary or did the um, the Scottish Rite side as well. And so um, I didn't really become active at that point. Um, to me, uh, I really internalized a lot of the <clears throat> symbolism of those degrees, and so although I wasn't active in participating, yes, I was a dues-paying member of all those and still am, it was really, you know, I would still go back and reflect upon <clears throat> those, those uh, additional degrees about some of the knowledge and wisdom that they contain that um, even though I wasn't active, I, you know, I still paid for that experience, if that makes sense, and mm -hmm. that now that I'm, I'm out of the East, I can go back and revisit those um, and show up, get, you know, meet people who, who don't know who I am and, and really start <laughs> to participate. Well, that makes sense. So with the last little bit of time here, because, again, I want to be respectful of everyone's time, um, didn't know if anyone wanted to talk about uh, anything that they've been kind of reading, um, any, any books that, that's been at the top of your Masonic book list um, that just kind of as a way to share information. I've got uh, I've got one with me, John, if you don't mind. Um, I'm a historian by trade. I did Russian history uh, at the university, and so I love um, books that talk about the the history of masonry as we know it. Um, of course, prior to, to 1717, there are a lot of different theories on how Freemasonry actually came into being, and uh, we we just simply don't know. Um, but there's uh, there's one book that uh, that I've come across, which is actually called, um, if you guys can see that, a Comprehensive <coughs> View of Freemasonry, Free, Freemasonry by Henry Wilson Coyle, 33rd degree. And he has done something in his first chapter alone that I actually haven't seen by any other Masonic author. And that is he has taken a look at the historiography of Masonry all of the primary sources and secondary sources that have been written about the craft from 1717 um, up through, I think, the early 1800s on the foundations of masonry and how sure. masonry was, uh, was founded and how it came about. And he actually does a historical critique of those bodies of literature and looks through them thematically looks at uh, the places where they really excel and the places where um, they may actually fall short. 
And as a historian myself, I think that's just a <laughs> phenomenal way to start a scholarly um, work on Freemasonry itself. He also goes through the history of Freemasonry in America and Britain, um, and we have a lot more um, source documentation on that, that that's reliable, but just from his opening um, chapter, it, it's a phenomenal book, and I recommend you know anyone who wants to see a really good critique of the literature that we have today existing on the foundations of Freemasonry mm -hmm. to go ahead and, and take a look at a comprehensive view of Freemasonry by uh, Henry Coyle. So how thick is that book? It's not very thick. It's maybe a couple hundred pages. Oh good, I can and, do it. Uh, yeah, it's it's really easy to read. Uh, the print's a little small, but uh, if we put on our glasses, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> uh oh Back to the H uh, topic there. <laughs> there is a book that I just finished, and I will just screen share this. Uh, you guys see this? Wait for it. <laughs> <Maybe. laughs> Alright, well it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> We're seeing your lovely face, Robert. <laughs> oh, Alright, well, in any case, the book is called The Better Na The Better Angels of Our Nature, Free Excellent book. Ooh, yes. And in the Civil War. So mm -hmm. it's uh it's uh, I believe it's by Mount Michael Halloran. Um and my book, it, it's it's so thick that it's actually an audible book because I, I didn't read it, I just listened to it. Good. But uh, it was really good. Um, <laughs> it's on audible. I have to say uh, um, it destroyed a lot of the Civil War myths, uh, Very true. some of the ones that are propagated, <laughs> say, in the Scottish Rite Northern Masonic jurisdiction. Uh, but with that disappointment, there was... A million more examples of uh, how amazing um, some of the tales of uh, Freemasonry in the Civil War uh, had been. If you guys ever read A House Undivided, which was written, I think, in the 70s, and uh, that kind of told about, they were just anecdotal stories about uh, the South and the North and how they stopped fighting to honor the Masonic Lodge uh, type stuff. Right. This one was a scholarly. Uh, work to where he had to verify everything. And it was a really good book, but if you buy it on Audible, be prepared because the guy who reads it, at first, I couldn't guarantee that it wasn't just like a uh, a computer voice thing reading <laughs> text, because the guy has a very odd voice. But okay. I got through it. It was a really great book. If you guys want to no, check it out. no I, I read that one too, actually, and well, I kind of amateur Civil War histor historian and what I liked about the book is you don't need to know much about Civil War right. to, to get it, uh, because really it talks more about, I mean, it sets up scenarios, this battle, this brother, this brother, these sides, these, these um, regiments, but after that, it really just kind of describes, um, like you said, lots and lots of examples of the, the brotherly love yeah. in the fraternity throughout the entire war, and um, Again, you don't need to be a Civil War geek to really appreciate it. Uh, you just need to really appreciate the Masonic bond and the mystic tie. <clears throat> yeah. Um, as for my book, I'm currently uh, skimming through the Craftsman Symbols. Oh. Yeah, uh, Selected Symbols from the Entered Apprentice degree. Uh, I'm doing a, a research paper. It was started for my AMD, uh, but uh, I'll probably just really uh, pimp it out wherever it's needed uh, on the, the circle punct or you know, the circle dot. Uh, I just love that symbol, and it has some very good um, examples throughout history of where that symbol was used, and really kind of ties a theme together. And that's uh, part of my research: is not to just say what does the ritual say, or say what is um, what's it mean to me. It's more what does it mean throughout time? What is sure. what is the thread throughout history that that links the symbol with some of the hidden truths and hidden meanings there? So it's it's been really enlightening for me. I'd like to send you a short Masonic research paper that I did for my lodge about the circumpunct. So I'll send you that. And use it uh, for if there's anything in there that uh, you want to love it. Maybe you like it and you want to expound on. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks. But you're, that's you're one of the things that probably going to be way awesomer. I just said awesomer. That's nice. a website. It's not wrong. <laughs> Theawesomer.com. Uh, <laughs> your paper will be much better. 
than mine. Much better. <laughs> it's cool. gonna be better. -er. Better. better -er. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's one of the, the things that really attracted me about Freemasonry. I'm an artist by trade, and one of my art styles, and I was talking to Brother Johnson about this recently, um, one of the original styles of painting that I I say I came up with because I there wasn't a specific name for it is is more of a very optimistic and inspiring version of surrealism instead of having very grotesque and mm -hmm. uh, dark imagery it had symbols <laughs> trying to teach uplifting stories so I called it inspirational symbolism so I have many many books about symbols and I've had them for many years since uh, before I became a Freemason. So I'm kind of rediscovering <laughs> those books again as I go do some research about different uh, Masonic symbols and how they've been used through history in different cultures. So that's very, I, I find that very interesting. So I, I look forward to checking out your book once, once it's done. Very cool. Okay, so we're about to the uh, yeah, half been, hour mark. I've been up reading. Uh... Go ahead. Uh oh, what do we have here, Nick? Oh, there you are. Oh, sorry. I, I just you know I just want to talk about my 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 reading choices because you know I'm very important. But uh, of course, I've actually been reading hipster Christianity. I know it's not related to masonry. No, that's cool. But I'm trying to figure out how it relates with the, the fraternity because you know I, frankly right now we've got kind of two. Two fraternal uh, fraternities going on. You've got the guys who want it for mostly the fraternal, and then you've got the guys who want it for the symbolism. And you know, it's kind of like you've got these lodges that you know they're not really sure what they want to be. You've got the guys who are like you know got got the earrings do, 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 all the way up their ears and down and stuff. You know, I'm just trying to understand exactly what we might see in the future for lodges, and you know, it's kind of interesting just to kind of figure that all out. But you know. Hopefully, I'll have I'll have a blog post within the next six nice. months to a year <laughs> about it. <laughs> You've got three days, Nick. Yes, and three days go. <laughs> My question uh, for you, Nick, is what have you got uh, against earrings? I'll look at that guy. I, I have nothing against <laughs> earrings. I just think you know they're pretty cool. I, I'm I'm too much of a wuss to actually have somebody <laughs> gun things near my head because you know that that sound chunk. <laughs> you know, I just imagine they'd be taking some of my neck with them, so, you know, freaks me out, but... <laughs> Excellent. All, All right, guys. Um, keep on. <laughs> yeah, let's we'll just uh, wrap things up. Excellent. I appreciate uh, everyone's input. It's, it, this is uh, really cool to share the information. A lot of the books that I, you know, I've been reading really came from uh, a lot of the blogs and podcasts that you guys are sharing, so um, keep that up. It's really been inspiring for me. Uh, so with that, um, we'll go around one last go around to have any final says and do any shameless plugs. So we'll we'll start with uh, Richards. All right, one uh, one thing that I was uh, thinking about as we were we were talking uh, through the throughout the uh, the podcast today, um, you know, we we talk a lot about degrees, and that's what we we're focusing on with Masonic Week and things of that nature. It occurred to me that we might actually have some some non Masons that might see this. And I just wanted to to give them a little bit of the uh, of the definitions behind you know one or two of the terms. And, and first, you know, when we talk about degrees, it is it is a, a you know initiation right essentially. Um, you know, all all fraternities have some sort of initiation ritual, whether you're talking about you know the Rotary or a college fraternity or something along those lines. So when we talk about degrees, that's just a an initiation ritual that that teaches some sort of moral lesson or some sort of life application. And I just wanted to make that clear for anybody watching us who uh, who isn't already a, a Mason. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Brother Juan. All right. Well, this has been fun. I look forward to joining you guys, if welcomed, next time. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, I like the idea that we are all having our own little experience with Freemasonry, and we're trying to do the best that we can in our own little universe. Uh, but coming together like this, and when we get together in Lodge, that's when that's when the real idea starts happen. It start happening, and we start mm -hmm. uh, getting excited about reading one book or another and finding more about what someone said. <clears throat> so, 
I, I've enjoyed the experience. Great. And, and uh, your podcast is? Yes, the podcast is The Winding Stairs. You can find it at the uh, thewindingstairs.com. You can find it on iTunes. To, uh, search for Freemasonry, and you should be able to find it. Um, it's on Stitcher Radio. It's on SoundCloud. It's pretty much in a, most of the popular podcatchers. And you can see some examples of my, my Masonic art at thewindingstairs.com and at freemasonryart.com. So... I invite you to visit and let me know what you think. Great. Thanks. Nick? Oh, uh, you might have seen, you might have heard about this website, millennialfreemason.com. I don't know if you've heard of it. <laughs> two L's, two N's. It's a great place. He promises that he'll put more content up. But uh, <laughs> anyway, the one thing I'm doing up in Minnesota is uh, we do this thing called Polar Plunge where we jump into a frozen lake. See, we're weird up here. We have nothing else better to do. So I've raised a bunch of money for Special Olympics, and I and some Lodge brothers uh, are going to be jumping into a frozen lake on the 22nd, so that should be fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm awaiting my cold. So, so I shouldn't say it's one. great for the heart. Uh, you know, <laughs> it is until it stops. So. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, there's uh, not much going on that way, but uh, MillennialFreemason.com, and thank you again, John, for uh, putting this all together. This is fantastic. Thanks. Robert? Uh, really quickly, just want to mention, uh, if you guys are anywhere near the New York area, they're doing a MS walk, uh, Masons Against MS. Um, you can check it out on the MSSociety.org, I believe it is. Um, check those guys out. They can't raise enough money. Uh, another thing you can check out, also, the Valley of Chicago, Chicago uh, Scottish Rite, is going to be doing their Dyslexia Walk soon. Uh, I think it was going to be in September, but they've moved it up. Uh, so check those things out, uh, valleychicago.org, I believe. If not, Valley Chicago and Google. You'll find it. Uh, my podcast is Whence Came You. You can visit the website, wcypodcast.com. Uh, all the episodes are there. If they're not there, you can check them out on iTunes. It's everywhere like uh, Brother Juan's. Only Juan kind of has the monopoly. If you type in Freemasonry in iTunes, he has the first podcast. <laughs> He's lucky. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so check those things out. Uh, Midnight Freemasons, that's www.midnightfreemason singular.blogspot.com. We're working on getting the .com. Three articles every week. Um, got a lot of amazing content. And uh, if any Masons out there like to do a little writing and want to share something with us, we'd love to put it up as long as it's within those Masonic guidelines. Uh, we could put it up on the website, and it'll stay up for a couple days. So Great. just uh, send me an email at wcypodcast at gmail.com. Excellent. As for me, don't have much to add other than you know, feel free to friend me on uh, Google Plus and Facebook. You can find me just by searching for John Ruark, J O N, no H, Ruark. And um, I appreciate everyone's time and hope we uh, keep this this trend up. Any uh, last calls? Hearing none. Have a great evening and keep searching for more light.